Hello everyone, welcome to the CXO, the Real Talk Breakfast Show, where we get real with C-levels, entrepreneurs, marketers and more. I'm Yen and join me today, we have Chun Yen. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm happy to be here. My name is Chun Yen and I run a health and fitness program helping women specifically to get in shape, drop body fat and uh, to build confidence. That's what I do. Okay, cool. Because uh, um, Chun Yen is actually recommended by our previous guest speaker, Cheryl. Yep. So thank you, Cheryl, for bringing yeah, Chun Yen on this thank podcast. You so much. <laughs> yeah, so when I first run through your Instagram profile, I was like, these guys has a very similar name as mine. <laughs> it's like Chun Yen and Chu Yen. Even my team member was like, Chun Yen, are you sure it's the right name? Long lost sister. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Okay, so you mentioned that you do fitness for women. Yeah. Like, why women specifically? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, why women specifically? Um, first and foremost, I believe that uh, women have a stronger desire to, to get in great shape <laughs> uh, as compared to most men, Malaysian, right? Um, jokes aside, I, I, I think because um, when I started off in the industry, when I, when I look into the market of uh, health and fitness and in personal training, um, I realized that not many trainers actually specialize in helping women. Mm. So there was a lot of like underlying um, problems and issues that were not addressed. Um, it means, you know, when, when, when a, a lady, when a female over 35, post-pregnancy, you know, after marriage, you put on all the weight uh, because of stress from work, right? and they want to get in shape, they want to start looking after their health. Mm. And you know, they go into gyms and, uh, and look for personal trainers. And then most times they find personal trainers that, that um, they end up hiring personal trainers that don't really address the real issues. Mm. So they have a lot of pain, a lot of struggles, a lot of challenges, and, and they find that you know, uh, normal personal trainers out there actually don't understand what a woman wants and mm. needs you know, when it comes mm. to getting in shape. Mm. Yeah. So you found this market gap, yeah. So, but, but how do you get about you know becoming a personal trainer and then becoming like building your own business? Like, what do you do before that? Um, <laughs> oh, that's a long story. Also, I I I am from business background. Mm. Um, didn't complete my degree, uh, and uh, I came off from uh, from studies, and then I actually started my first business in. Uh, an online meal prep delivery, mm, right? That was, that was many years ago. That was like, that was like before Reels, before TikTok, right, and all that. And uh, that's before uh, Facebook ads was a thing, right? And before influencers era. Mm. And uh, and from there, uh, I run that for two years. I left the business. Uh, after that, I, I I went into like a normal job. I tried jobs and I failed. Right? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I was actually in a sales job, um, trying to figure out what I want to do, mm. and uh, I didn't like the job. And and uh, I started getting a lot of comments, like people asking, "Hey, are you a trainer? Are you a trainer?" When in reality, I was actually trying to sell some other stuff, you know. <laughs> and and um, I think the next natural thing natural step to do is like go into personal training which um was one of was really good at um the fact that i was in bodybuilding for, mm -hmm. for some time for many years and then um uh so i wanted to turn that passion into something that could help real people solving real problems so and then i started off as a personal trainer i got a first client who's a female mm. and i said i said to her look i never had any, any clients mm -mm. Um, but I'm really good at this stuff you know, mm. I know you want to get in shape but if you can just give me like three months um, you can see what I'm talking about and the results I promise you is gonna be amazing so we took in three months um, and then she did everything I said and uh, I see I would see her like two times or three times per week at the gym mm. and three months later nobody could recognize her like wow. she, she had had a real transformation for her body right mm. and from there, that's where people started coming in got mm. referrals coming in that's how i kickstart my my personal training career so you started off with just one client yeah. like this lady yeah. so would you say that like, she she's like the game changer for you for in terms of career or was there any other aspect that actually got you into this business 
Yeah, I was I would say so I, I would say that she's a game changer um, mm. because it you know when you want to pay someone you want to hire someone mm. you, you want to look at the credibility of the person and say, who is this person does he have the the, the credentials and all that mm. and uh, surprisingly the first time when I talked to her she didn't ask me about anything <laughs> you know she asked how many years you have been training clients do you have any clients mm-hmm. do you have any experience what is your history you know and I said look you're here for this problem mm-hmm. I can solve it this is how long you're gonna give me uh, mm-hmm. for the time per- uh, duration and mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you this result she said okay mm-hmm. so that's how it uh, that's how it all started uh, okay just now you mentioned about the problems that women have that most uh, personal trainer don't address it what would be the common misconception about this mm-hmm. Um, I think the first one would be the the personal trainers think that mm. for women they just need exercise, mm. they just need to like cut sugar and then they can lose weight. And so they start they started like giving them like training session like three four times per week. You know, mm. train them, really push them in the gym, and then when they don't get results, when they're not losing weight, they just mm. question them like, oh. Yeah. Why are you being like this? So I, I know I know clients that came to me and said that the previous trainer um, actually talked them down, mm. right? And like try to like like shame them, say, oh, why why can't you do this? Simple things you can't do. It. But when in reality, when you look at a uh, a female, mm. um, we're talking like somebody post pregnancy uh. and all that. There are like hormones, the work, drug juggling with um, like family responsibilities, mm. and also they're their overall well-being, mm-hmm. like mentally, so that is what we want to address. Mm. This so it would be something like it's not just because they don't exercise, that's why they get fat, exactly. but it's because like the hormones, especially after you give birth, mm-hmm. you know, your body, it changed everything. Yeah. So even your lifestyle, because if you have kids, you have work. Yeah. Yeah. So you cannot juggle between like not exercising, you know, and, you know, yeah. live the life. Yeah. 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 Okay, interesting. Um, probably you can, do you have any case study that you can share with us? Like what would be the success story and maybe any case study that didn't really work well or? Yeah, yeah. I'll share with you like, um, I've got clients that got really amazing results. Like, mm. like um, drop like 8 kg in 3 weeks, 15 kgs in um, 3 months, uh, 15 to 18 kgs in 3 months. I've got clients who lost 40 kg in a cross of uh, 9 to 12 months with me. Mm. So results are, are very subjective to the individual, of course. Yeah, right? yeah. Depending on how well you comply. Mm. And and as for me, I don't I don't really measure the, the client, how serious is the person mm. by how much weight they drop because there are other aspects of it that we want to consider. Maybe their goal is not just for weight loss. Mm. Um, uh, of course, you, you know, if you want to talk about weight loss, like if you go on a three days fast, five days fast, you don't eat food, you know, you, you also can lose yeah, the weight. You can lose your weight, that. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, I also had um, people that came in and didn't work because they had like some underlying issues, like thyroid problems, mm-hmm. PCOS. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, maybe they they came into the program with the wrong reasons. They mm. they, they didn't get. I mean, they were expecting something else, mm. but it's, and then they were like, "Oh, I pay this money, like outsourcing my, my health," and then I, I just wish that everything would solve. Mm. But but the truth is, I mean, my job is just to show show you um, what is the right way to do it, pinpoint where's the problem, and bottom line is, I can't make somebody who don't want to do it Mm-mm-mm. to do something. Mm. Okay, I think you speak a very good point that you can't make someone to do something that do what they don't want to do it. Yeah. And you know, being women, I would say uh, generally we are quite emotional. So how do you because you do um, business focusing on women, like how do you tackle the emotional part for this side? Yeah. 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 So I think first first step is that um, I would really qualify mm. the person before coming into the program because mm. um, it's a very specific program um, it targets a very specific niche mm. and it solves a very specific problem and um, there are there are like guidelines and pointers that sort of like a qualifying 
uh, mm. face, you know, be, to tell you that, hey, this is not going to be suitable, this is not going to work. So if you come in, you're just going to waste your money mm-hmm. and uh, this is probably not the right time for you. So usually we get on a call with the person, mm. like a consultation call and uh, really understand the person, mm. um, what problems they're looking to solve, what are the issues they're facing and then like, what are the expectations, like, what results are you looking for? Uh, what are the results you're looking to, to achieve? Mm. Let's say you want to drop like 20 kgs in two weeks, Bro. or you want to, you want you you want to reduce your thigh size or your your waist, mm. and then you you work like 12 hours per day, and then you're super high stress. And I would just tell the person, hey, this is this is not going to work. Mm-mm-mm. Why don't you look at other aspects or other ways? You can, or maybe this is not the right timing. Mm. I would actually like give them like an honest. Um, it's like a con- consultation session Absolutely. with them first. Uh. Yeah. Okay, cool. But like, what would be the most common reason that people reach out to you? Is it just because of weight loss or do they actually understand that they need a change in their lifestyle? Like what would be the most common reason? Yeah. Um, the most common reason would be, let's say, um, well, my, my, my clientele, like, to give you a background, my clientele mm-hmm. are usually women over 35, right? 35, 40s. 50s so um, typically um, it's someone that you know they have spent maybe the past five to seven or ten mm-hmm. years focusing on their career they've given everything to the family mm-hmm. you know, children uh, husband and then like family and then they just reached a point like hey, I'm 35 five more years I'm gonna be 40 mm-hmm. and I have all this weight that I don't want mm-hmm. and it's sticking in some <laughs> they got body. everything but yeah <laughs> and me. then they would they, usually it would break down and cry right mm-hmm. on, on a call with me and say how um, they used to look a certain way they used mm-hmm. to feel a certain way they used to fit this size this size of clothes and then at one point they're like because of of uh they're giving so much of effort mm-hmm. in, in um in the responsibility yeah? yeah they they just overlooked themselves and then just combined with like stress you know mm. social responsibilities family and just put on a weight mm. so that would be the reason mm, yeah. okay i understand so because weight loss is just i feel that weight loss itself is a very physical thing mm. but it attached with a lot of emotional yeah. especially uh it comes with the body shaming mm-hmm. and things like that has any client come to you and say that hey, hey actually i've done this program for this is long period of time and i don't see the results is there any client that really feel demotivated throughout the program or like they just want to give up half, halfway? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I don't, if I say no, then I'll be <laughs> lying to you. You know, you know, I got a lot of, I, I, I've accepted the fact that mm. it's not everyone that I can help. Mm-mm, yeah. You know, there are some people that came in with like real problems, like mm. someone passed away, this person died, and then they're like, they're just not in the right mental space to, mm. to do it. Uh, or rather, we have people that came in with the wrong reasons. Mm. Right? I want to prove someone wrong. I want to prove someone right. Is it like those like relationship problems that they say like, I I just want to prove my yeah. ex boyfriend like yeah. you see look at my body. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah. So so that would be a red flag for me. Mm. You know. So we got people that you know the biggest biggest challenge is um, let's say um, somebody come in for about two to three weeks, Mm-mm. right, and then they were expecting their weight to drop like crazy because they're looking at all the results that I show on yeah. social media, like, oh, this person dropped 15 kg, mm. this person dropped 20 kg, and look at my past track record, right, all these mm-hmm. clients, and then they start to feel like, what, why, 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 what's wrong, you know, yeah. what's wrong? And, and uh, this is where if they, are, if they are open enough, they would raise their hand mm. and they would, they would come to me and they would find out like they find out, hey, what's the issue, coach? Like, try to like find out where is the problem. But mm. there are some who are a little bit more close-minded, Mm-mm-mm. and then they and probably they just they just feel like oh, no point talking. Maybe mm. I'm the problem, and it, it's it's mm. a mix of psychological, mm. emotional, and then some underlying health uh, issues that we don't know what is it, and mm. they don't want to find out. Mm. So that I cannot help. Mm. Is there any lesson that you learn from communicating with women? Because 
I know communication is key in all businesses mm. because you yourself you're also doing as a business, right? Yeah. Is there any key lessons that you learn from communicating with women? Because like you say, women sometimes when they when they are close minded, they don't tell you the problems and you have to like guess, oh what is she thinking about? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? to tell you the story, right? Mm. Um, I've I've spoken with you know, right now to talk to count the active clients, I have like over forty of them. Wow, right? okay. So At one go. It, yeah, well, active clients. Mm. Right? So think about having 40 different personality, 40 women with different emotions, mm. um, with different stories, mm. different goals, and different level of fitness, um, even though they are in the same niche. Mm. So um, this is where I really need to educate them on how they should communicate with me. Mm. Like for example, I would just talk to this client and then some and this is the time of the month right mm -hmm, something okay. like that like, I'm just Very talking normally easily triggered yeah I'm just saying hey did you check did you update this and that you know mm. did you upgrade, update your progress photos and wait is there anything okay and it's like why are you why are you scolding me why are you questioning mm. why are you for listening you know and I was like hey are you okay so I would I would just take a step back and I would say um, is everything okay maybe mm. this is not the right time for us to talk then um, I can text you on, on another time. Mm. That's how it does I do it. Okay, very interesting. Because it, it felt like dealing with 40 girlfriends at one go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like girlfriend more than not like the same thing. <laughs> okay, so you so do you train them all by yourself or do we have a team to do that? Like how do we go about handling 40 active clients at one go? Mm. Um I do have a team. Mm. So you're not the personal trainer? I, I'm not the personal oh. trainer. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a team, a lean team, less than 10 trainers. Mm. So because um, exercise is one of the aspects of the program. Mm -mm -mm. And I, 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 I mean, a few years ago, I made a decision that I, I'm, I will have to pull back from training clients physically at the gym mm. um, in order to serve a larger scale of people mm. and solve a bigger problem. Mm. So, so most of my work revolves around like troubleshooting, consulting, mm. uh, designing programs, managing clients, um, of course on business side, like sales, marketing, mm -hmm. operating system systems, and also like continue to learn things and develop new, new stuff to help the clients. Mm, yeah. Okay. So you mentioned exercising is just one of the program elements. So yeah. what are the other other elements of the program? Um, one of it would be uh, nutrition, mm. nutrition um, planning, right? Planning. Because everyone's program with different, mm. everyone's fitness program with different, based on their diet history, mm. their medical history, their um, injuries, lifestyles, lifestyle, absolutely right, and also their goals. What are they looking to achieve, mm. um, and all that. So. Um, it's a very uh, problem target. Problem solving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. kind of problem. So in terms of nutritionists, like nutrition, like do you advise them on what they should eat, what they shouldn't, and things like that as yeah. well? Is it? Yeah. Is it because you had the business about meal prep, that like it helps you to you know give a better uh, suggestion to them? Mm, yeah, I I advise them. Mm. Uh, I'm not a nutritionist, mm -mm -mm. right? And uh, uh, I do have the necessary like. Like certificates to help, right? But, but not at a medical level. Mm, not okay, at a medical level. More like uh, training, performance, exercise, and and uh, so on and so forth. Um, and the truth is, you, you, today, you if you go online, you go on the internet, you see all sorts of information about like diet, macronutrients, calories, mm, and all that. Yeah. So it's it's something comment it's something mm. that everyone have access to mm -hmm. but the question is like when you want to do it mm. how do you actually start make it applicable to your life uh. yeah Okay, so you actually talk a lot on the technical side, yeah. uh, but I want to move towards the, Relax a bit. Yeah, relax a bit, you know, not so serious. We can talk about business and marketing, <laughs> although it still sounds very serious, but yeah. yeah. So, um, do you call yourself an entrepreneur because you started this business, right? I will say so. You say so <laughs> as an entrepreneur? Okay, good too. I, I like that. Yeah. I like entrepreneurs because I think they have the mindset that most like to six people don't have. Mm. They want to advance, you know, they want to you know, improve people's life, like you say, uh, for mm -hmm. your business vision and mission. So as an entrepreneur, like how will you say, how do you build a business? Like in terms of, 
I saw that you do social media content, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how do you like, what do you think what do you think about your own content? <laughs> how do <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky question. How do I think about my own content? Mm. Like after you post it, you'll feel like, it hey, actually don't look very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happens all the time. Uh, um, the, the, I, I, I actually don't really look at my own self. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's strange. I know that's how I do it. Uh, I, I cringe when I look at myself. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think that's very normal. I cringe at my own voice. Yeah. So yeah, if I listen to this podcast, I'll be like, why does she sound like that? So that's so why I get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know, like, why don't you share with me, like, when you look at my stuff, um, like, what, what is your first impression, impression. about my stuff? Mm. Okay, Ken. So basically, when I first scroll through Instagram, I saw a lot of short videos, like him talking as he walked in the park and like, hey, you should know about this, about the misconception yeah. about, you know, fitness and also how you should change your lifestyle based on the, the food that you take in and things like that. Uh. So I find it pretty interesting. That's why we got him on the show. <laughs> yeah, if not, I, I wouldn't uh, invite him. Uh. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, my, my marketing um, style is, is uh, uh, would I say unique? Because um, I don't really follow the trend of how people do it. Right? Mm. Um, people would want to do something, they would look at what is happening in the market, mm. and then they would look at uh, what, is trend, what is a trendy way of doing things, and then they just coin it to their own ways. Mm. But for me, um, I'm at this point like, I, I don't really care so much about the traction. Mm. Of, um, on social media. Yeah, whether they whether the social media platform actually push my content out there, uh, but rather I want I want to get very dialed in with the message. Mm. It means if you are the person I'm looking for, then you would be attracted to my message, mm. my content, and my writings, mm. uh, my videos, and uh, it would be helpful for the person, in my niche, right? Mm-mm-mm. And uh, that is essentially what I'm looking to achieve. Yeah. Because what I understand from business also, it very, it's very much relying on word of mouth mm. that as your main marketing tool. Mm. So has anyone like said bad stuff about your business or most of the time is client share to client and how does it go about that? Yeah, I mean, in a business, you cannot please everybody. <laughs> there, are, there are people that would just be upset with you for mm. being you. And I've learned that over the years. Um, you know. Oh, tell me more about yeah, it. I, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, why you, we have you on the podcast when to learn more yeah, secrets. Yeah. To, to me, I think one of the reasons what is stopping um, business owners, mm-hmm. marketers, freelancers, or anybody who's running a business, trying to uh, market themselves in the market, you know, from uh, pulling up your phone and just mm. record a video and just share some random stuff, even if you look funny, you, you, you don't look your best, mm. is... The thought of um, <laughs> going out there. Yeah, going out there, and then what would my friends think about me? Yeah, your family, your really, family. relatives. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Would I would I cause any like? Would I upset some people for saying this thing? Mm-mm. But I learned that that is the thing that you want to talk about Mm-mm. because effective marketing has to repel some people. Mm. And in the yeah, so that you attract the yeah right you attract the well. right people to come in yeah okay yeah. I I record that because in marketing uh, myself I also do marketing by the way so yeah. sometimes for real we don't we are unable to please every single one so yeah understand that yeah. okay so uh, other than just like doing social media content what else do you do to push your business or like is there any secret that you want to share with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is also tied to the, your previous question. Yeah. Uh, you say like, for any uh, uh, people who want to start something, right? Mm. S- start, maybe you are a personal trainer who wants to start taking clients, or you are a um, freelance marketer or marketer, you want to take in like um, businesses, clients, for yourself. Mm. Um, uh, so like I use Instagram. Mm. Right, I don't know why Facebook doesn't sit well with me. I, I don't know why. No, but they say Facebook is for older generation. Yeah, yeah, Facebook is for older, older generation. <laughs> and like, I grew up with Instagram. I know how it works. Um, how old are you? Huh? I am turning twenty nine this year. Oh, right. Okay. Instagram generation. Yeah, yeah. 
And TikTok is too young for me. Mm. I know at a certain point of my my business career, I might need to learn mm-hmm. how to... I still haven't figured out. Oh my god, yes. I can understand that. Yeah. I'll be like, what? what's up with all this dancing? And yeah. it's like, 2 million views with this? <laughs> Hello, Kiyomi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's old time, but yeah. yeah. So, my, uh, I use face, I use um, Instagram and then I run ads. Mm. Uh, you run ads, ads as well? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Cool. So you learn that by yourself or like you, you have some gurus I, to teach you? self I, I did. I did learn it. I, I, I actually have someone who teaches me mm. right, yeah, uh, on Facebook. And it's strange because you hardly see a, a, a personal trainer or somebody from training, exercise background, health and fitness, uh, going into like marketing, mm. going into like ads and, and all that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what was the biggest struggle that you find yourself like? facing right now like at this moment what's your biggest struggle in terms of like uh building your own business you know getting out there on social media on business you know what's your biggest struggle wow what's my biggest struggle right now Mm. it can be i don't even know how to use canva for example Mm. because Mm. you will need graphics when you do facebook ads as well Mm. you don't know how to write a script for example, mm. like what's the, what is your biggest struggle? I'll tell you what was my biggest struggle okay. and how I overcome it. My biggest struggle was actually like turn the self- selfie video on <laughs> and like start talking. Mm. You know, the first time I, I, I did that, I spent eight hours to record a two minute video of me just talking about like tips, something I've been doing for many years. Mm-mm-mm. But when you, when, you, when you pull that camera on, you, you just don't know how to speak. Like, uh, <laughs> and then you just get stuck, right? And then you, 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 maybe I, I just said, like, the video would go on for about one minute. Hey guys, mm. blah, 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 blah. It goes smooth. And then you say the wrong word and like, snap. You have to like snap the whole thing mm. and then you repeat. And do it again. Yeah. Mm. yeah that was one of it. Mm. And I think uh, I put a lot of effort, right, mm. in overcoming that. So the thing about video is, you don't want to just record a video. Mm. You want to be. You want to make people want to listen to you. Mm. It's a quality content. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the quality of the content. You want to make it relatable to your market. Mm. And also, how do you show up confidently? Mm. Yes, true. At the back of my head is like, look at this face. Like, who wants to look at this face? Like, so weird. <laughs> Every day you're looking at this face. You know, mm. but that's a secret. You, you, you keep doing it keep doing it they keep doing it and then at the one point just get used to it and people start asking like hey how do you how do you do so well and you're like oh mm. really it's <laughs> over time time practice makes perfect yeah. same goes to your exercising <laughs> <laughs> no, because i actually have a secret to share yeah. uh, because before that i'm actually not an on-screen person yeah. so when i was younger yeah. i'm not very old but when i was younger i actually have my camera and I start to speak. Mm. I just put there like one at midnight. Mm. I don't know why midnight, but yeah. I just put my camera and I start to speak to the camera. I just tell my day. Mm. Because at the time it was um, the vlog generation. Mm. Like you just mm. go around, you know, vlog, go to cafes and things mm. like that. So I actually practice at home by myself. Mm. It's a bit embarrassing to show the videos. <laughs> Let's not show it. <laughs> but yeah, because I really understand how you feel when you see your own videos. Mm. And when you listen to your own voice as well, you'll be like, do I sound like that? Do I sound that annoying? I mean, like, we are not used to our own voice <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So very interesting. So now, do you find yourself like very comfortable to do content already? Or um, like- I would say, I would say I am more comfortable now. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for about three years, recording videos, like three, four years now. Mm. Um, sometimes you, you do have some bad days that <laughs> You want to record a one minute video and you take like 40 minutes, mm-hmm. you, you're just not in a day, yes. so you just, you just off it, you do something else. Mm. And, and find another day. Get back like, to yeah. It. yeah. Mm. Do you go into TikTok? Like, is, is I do have a TikTok account, um, but mainly it's, it's, it's all like, like uh, repurposed content uh. Uh, from Instagram. Mm. Yeah. And I think the, the second challenge I had was actually um, learning about learn how to write like the copywriting. Oh, copywriting. copywriting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when I started off, like copywriting is, is one of the, uh, in Malaysia, it's like very underrated. 
Yes. It's That's why they have Cheryl to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's very hard to find um, great copywriters. Mm, yes. But, but and, and at one point in my business, I, I made a decision. Like, mm. I said to myself, like, this year I need to, like, I need to mask. I need to write more. I, I believe everyone can write. Yes, but how well do you write? Yeah, uh, because we were trained in school. You know, uh, you write, you write essays, like, <laughs> and and all that. So you, everyone can write, but uh, how can you actually uh, attract people's attention into reading like a long piece? Yeah, you know? yeah. Expe- especially if you are um, a business person, mm. um, and you have these ideas, you have all these ideas, and. You want to hire a copywriter who don't have the same brain to mm. to write out. Write out. Right? Mm. It's gonna be that's where the friction is. Mm. Yeah. So that's a skill that that um, I believe everyone should learn. Yeah. Actually, that is pretty true because copywriting is not just about writing out the ideas, but it's also very important that how do you attract people's attention. And like usually, even I think Cheryl talked about it. Uh, we need the hook. We need to. We need the call to action, the CTA. Mm. Like, how do you actually tell people make an action out of the script? Mm. You know, because a lot of times on social media, although we are appearing on screen, you know, but people still listen to your script. If you go to TikTok, you will see the video. How it start off, it will be like, this is why you need to know about blah blah <laughs> blah, or this is the best tip that you have to know. So it's all these hooks that actually get people to listen to your content as well. Yeah. yeah. Just for myself, I also struggle with copywriting, yeah. not just graphics. Mm. And now, pe- nowadays, people don't really look into graphic, graphic. Yeah, they look into video content, short video content. They love it. So I think as business, also, it's very important to step into the game. You know, I know it might be hard to start, mm. but video content is the way to go for now, lah. Mm. Mm. As what we see in the market trend. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I mean. When you look at the TikTok videos, you just mm. feel like oh, I'm too far behind the cop to to catch all that. So mm. um, I feel that no point, <laughs> no point. Keep chasing it and mm. just just do whatever that. that yeah, just do whatever works. you want because you you can never chase it up basically. Yeah. But at least start somewhere for yeah. as a as a business. Yeah. So what would be your advice for a business who or even like personal trainer who wants to you know accepting clients? You know what would be your advice? Mm. I would say. Um, start, start learning about. Um, uh, start creating like valuable post mm. um, content uh, because your ideal client or your customers, um, you need to you need to create an avenue for your ideal clients to find you. Mm. Uh, and the best way to create that is you know you 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 use your social media will already have a, you know a list of following. Your friends, yeah, also. your friends, <laughs> and then you start, you start writing um, helpful like contents, mm. pump it out there, and let people read. And then if it if it lands well, if it if it solves a, mm. their problem, if they answer the questions in their head, then they are more likely to raise their hands and, and reach out for help. Is there any uh, case study where oh they actually read this article and they reach out to you like a oh, very good lead? No, all the time. Oh, all cool. the time, right? Like earlier we were chatting, you uh. were asking, I was asking you, as a marketer, how do you find my my content? Yes. Because you can see that okay, I have like ten k followers. Mm. I'm not trying to brag. <laughs> <laughs> Better than yeah, me. Ten k followers. But if you scroll down to the ratio of mm. um, the likes and the posts mm. or the views. Mm. Uh, the ratio is a huge gap. Mm. It means you probably get like thirty to fifty likes um, each post, but there's ten ten thousand people there, right? Well, and then yeah. and then the the views, video views can go up like thousands, two thousand, three thousand. Mm. It should be at least ten percent, you know, to mm-hmm, understand that. Yeah. So, uh, but to me, why do I keep doing it, even though the traction is not as high as compared to most influencers in the fitness industry or, mm. or other niche? Uh, it's because um, my posts are are towards people who are ready. Mm, you know? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, it's towards people who are ready. Um, so when I write a post with a call to action, I usually get DMs into mm. my my my, my uh, private inbox. Mm. So it's working for me, I would say. Mm. Now you talk about like people going into DM, right? I'm just very interesting to know. Like, mm. what is the most interesting or uh, be it oh DM that you got. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, you know, one of that's one of the reason why I work with women. Mm. So Sherry, I didn't, I didn't tell you why I work, work, work with women. Initially, it was because right uh, when I was like eighteen, nineteen, mm. um, I was heavily into bodybuilding because that's my passion. Mm. That's what I love about exercise, training, um, nutrition. So. I would post more photos of me training, more physique photos, uh, lifting weights, and all that. And I started attracting a lot of wrong audience. Wrong audience. <laughs> I, I Fill in the blank. <laughs> wrong audience mm. sending me pictures that, uh, um, that not is, appropriate. Yeah, not appropriate. And um, and these 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 DMs. This attention usually go to the extent like they they pretend to be like interested bias mm-hmm. and then they like back then before Calendly existed before Zoom existed you would meet the person right and oh, then you, in would, person. you would talk about how the program works and you know mm. we want to acquire my service and they were doing something fishy with me right <laughs> so I <laughs> I was quite annoyed <clears throat> right they would call me and then they would get my number and then they were like oh they would harass me so I. I actually like this at a right stop. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna end that, and and that also gave me a a, a signal like mm-hmm. maybe the the angle of my marketing was wrong. Back then, I knew nothing about marketing. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I just do whatever Trying, I mean, right? Yeah. Try and error exactly, and and uh, and after that, I just stopped, and then I pivoted into women, mm. right? And then I started posting like women exercising, training results, mm. and that's where it took off. Mm, yeah. Oh, very interesting. Because I find like as I talk to business owners and entrepreneurs, right, I find they are like what actually triggered them to change their business is because of something weird. Yeah. Like, this is one of the good examples, yeah. like because of all these DMs, thank you to those guys as well. Because <laughs> if not we wouldn't have Chunyan who is doing women's fitness <laughs> only, right? So I have to say thank you. <laughs> yeah. But is there any like good DMs that, that you know from women like they will say like oh hi Chunyan I just want to get to know you blah 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 like is there any traction? Oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> um, I think for for women um, they're more appropriate, mm, right? more professional as well. Yeah, like. they're more professional, and the part of you. <laughs> they don't usually do the DM thing like yeah. how guys would, mm. um, and also uh, a big part would would be. Um, how we we present ourselves on social media, mm. uh, you would attract the kind of people who would, who would want to raise their hand. You know, if you mm. if you just show like you, you know, dress up nice in a restaurant and all that, and, and weird thing was like many months back, I start having like a lot of scammers like <laughs> taking my photos and uh, oh, looking for the love of their life and all that <laughs> in a, in a different name, mm. you know, so. Those are things, but my point is that um, if you if you look at the people that your customers that reach out for help, right, you can actually make a lot of adjustment from how you market. Mm. Maybe it's your messaging, maybe it's how you present yourself. I think this applies to business as well because mm. uh, not just for personal branding. As a business, you need to be very aware with the message that you put out there, your mission, vision. You know, because sometimes what you think your company is is not what people think your company is. Yeah. So is there any uh, misconception that people have about your business? You know, like, would people be like... Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I believe um, the market, the, the health and fitness market in, mm. uh, in Malaysia specifically, is saturated with a lot of like, um, meal replacement, yeah. uh, diet, the- people selling uh, health Nutrition. programs, mm. but actually they tie their, their program, their service with their products. Mm. And then you have a group of um, uh, uh, people who are doing like online diets, this, this people doing online diets, uh, lose weight fast and all that. So people are, are skeptic and they started asking me like, you know, how do you run your programs? Mm-mm. Is this physical? Or if it's online, then where is your center? You know, do you have a center? Uh, then if you don't have a center, then are you how selling you? supplements? Mm. You know, there are also a lot of like uh, customers who are not ready in the sense that they they inquire my service like they want to buy a bag. 
buy a bag. Yeah. What bag? How much? What bag? <laughs> like a bag, like like you want to shop for a bag online, oh. you know, like you just scroll through, you do window shopping, like oh, how much is this? Oh, just look That's outside. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so so and, and these are these are I would say like very core cool audience that needs mm-hmm. a little bit more educating. So mm-hmm. I would usually like give them some time to mm-hmm. learn about what I do. Mm-hmm. So just now you talk about you have a team of trainers, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you make sure that they are actually at the same level? Same level as in like the mentality or you know their mindset that the reason why you want to train women specifically? Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Um, I actually went through a lot hiring the right trainers. Mm-hmm. Uh, reason is because um, in Malaysia, the personal training industry, um, the setting of it, right? Mm. You, you have the commercial gyms, you yeah, have, yeah. Right, the famous commercial gyms. Uh, no need to mention a name. And then you have like um, you have like this uh, local gyms, boutiques, and then mm. you have like Committee gyms. independent freelance oh, trainers mm. and all that. So, um, and then I begin to ask the question: um, What is the standard of um, personal trainers in Malaysia. Uh, what kind of trainings do they have access to? Mm. Uh, apart from the, the, uh, like the famous certifications that they have available in Malaysia. And, and I realized that you know, most of these trainers, they, they wouldn't go the route of um, paying for a, a, a course you know, because that would cost you mm, like yeah. 5k, 6k, you know, and then you need to study, you need to take like three months to graduate, right? Or to get a, to be a certified trainer. So the other route, which is cheaper and you make money along the way would be actually uh, um, apply for a job mm. as, a, as an, an instructor in a commercial gym. Mm. And then you, you climb the corporate ladder, mm. like you go in as an instructor and then you just teach the you community. just share like oh this is the equipment this is the name of the equipment this is the name of that this is the exercise and you're not allowed to train people and then you you take their in-house courses right and then you develop your skills over time mm-hmm. and then you become a uh, maybe a, a trainer a junior trainer and then with the number of hours that you serve you, you train how many sessions 200 mm-hmm. sessions or your mm-hmm. sales right you, you hit a high sales and then you start up the rank you yeah know, you you, mm-hmm. you up the rank you go to like intermediate senior and all and uh, an in-house trainer so that is the that is a context of how a regular personal trainer in Malaysia would go in the mm. career path and uh, that was also one of the reasons why my dad <laughs> my, my late dad um, mm. disagreed when I said I wanted to learn exercise uh, sports and exercise science phys- uh, physiology in Melbourne and in, in overseas because he felt like my dad was a traditional businessman mm, so it was like understand is the mindset me? is different yeah he asked me the question like okay I'm gonna invest like half a million ringgit mm. to you right and you're telling me that after I spend this money on you you come out you're just gonna apply to a to be a personal trainer mm-hmm. like it doesn't make sense to me how long are you gonna get back your return mm-hmm. so and then that like shattered my dreams to be mm. a, to, to, to go through a full degree right mm. and then you have the sports science degree uh usually local universities like sports science mm. then coming back here right so when a, a normal trainer would go into like uh like these uh commercial gyms to learn uh, to, to advance their career path um, they usually end up like doing other stuff mm. instead of teaching them how to uh, uh, conduct proper training to mm. deliver results to their clients um, their job, the job scope is more towards hitting sales target. Mm. You know, the, the training is more towards you know how do you go to the like the, the gym floor mm. with members and then you like go give a one to two free session and then you you get the person to sign a ten sessions with you. So the manager's training would more uh, would focus more on like the sales, 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 yeah. sales, sales. The KPIs. Yeah, yeah. And, and it puts a lot of personal trainers off. One, mm. they they end up taking a full time job mm. uh, that doesn't actually equip them with the skills to properly train the clients and get them the results they want. Whether it's mm. fat loss, strength training, muscle building, how do you conduct training sessions, and then you know how to be skillful, mm. how to be an expert in that field, right? Mm. Um, rather, they are they are taught 
to just follow the yeah. standard yeah. and procedures. How to, how to make the clients renew like more, yeah. more, 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 contract, more, 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 more you know? programs. So they end up they end up chatting with the clients, mm. um, um, getting very friendly with the, with the clients. Mm. That's what you see typically in a in a commercial gym setting, right? Mm. So when I start a team, when I build a team, I told myself like, well, if there's one dream I would want to have is. I would want to raise the standard of personal trainers in Malaysia because to be honest, in Malaysia, um, people look down on trainers, mm. right? People look down on personal trainers. Um, but if you're in the UK, in Europe, you're in the US, them. you are heavily celebrated. If you get if you took a job training clients, mm. you know, you, uh, the opportunity is bigger there and mm. people respect you. So, so when I build a team, I told myself, look, I'm not going to get the trainers to do the marketing and sales mm. because the company is going to do that. Mm. And I want to create a setting where I'm going to like inject my my training philosophy, mm. uh, my style of conduct, my my training style, what is what are my principles when um, training clients, uh, my way of doing things mm-hmm. and my way of delivering results to, to the trainers. Um, and that's what I want for my team mm. so that I can standardize the results uh, mm. that my clients are getting. Mm. So that was my, that was what I wanted. Those are some real talk, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I really agree, finding the right talent is one of the biggest struggles that business face because skills can be taught, you know, uh, mindset can be taught, but the heart and the passion to do what you are thinking is hard to you know, penetrate to the person, to the talent. Yeah. So yeah, I, I believe all business owners will relate to this. Uh. Mm. So I good luck for all that is looking for talents out there. I believe they are good talents. It's just that um, you really need to up the standard that us as a leader in future, like business or business owners or entrepreneurs, we how do we actually teach and educate the next generation mm. to not just think about the standard, mm. like the normal, you know, climbing up the corporate ladder, but is to learn and train your brain how do you think differently yeah. in a good way. Yeah. You know? So yeah, those were some serious talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, coming back to the more casual questions. Yeah. So, is there anything? Uh, is there any real talk? that you want to put out there to your audience or to business owners or you know to women out there who want to try your program? Oh, this is a very broad question. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Sure. let me be more specific. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, what would be your real talk to women who wants to try your program? Mm, okay, well, so this is, my, this is my advice. Well, there's, there's a lot and I can go on and on and on and on. One uh, piece, one piece. Yeah, one piece, one piece. Um, <laughs> This is what I have to say, right? If you are a female, you are looking to get in shape, or you want to improve your health and fitness, um, first and foremost, you need to do it with the right reasons. Mm. You want to do it with the right reasons. You you don't want to have like unrealistic um, expectations. Expectation of how things should be done or what kind of results you want to get. For example, you wouldn't want to look at a magazine. Uh, a Victoria's Photoshop, Secret guys. model, right? Photoshops. <laughs> right. You want you want to look at um, Instagram models and influencers, mm. how they look, and then like compare yourself to them, mm. because that is um, one unrealistic. Two, you are being unfair with yourself. Yeah. Because I believe that true beauty um, begins when you start embracing yourself. Mm. Being as, confident yeah, in your own body who as you well. Are, mm. uh, you embrace your body structure. How you, how you look, your hair color, your eye, co- your eye color, your your body shape, your bone structure, your, your your hip bone structure, all that is is what makes you unique. And when you when you embrace that, you, that's where confidence comes from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Those are very good because not a lot of girls, even men, also face the body shaming issue. Yeah. Like they would think that, why do I have this body? And they want to make a change. But a lot of times they don't know where and when to start. Mm-hmm. So this is why we have Chun Yen who is pe- trying to penetrate into the business, you know, to educate women, you know, by creating content and even to start out this great business with, uh, I would say a very positive mission and vision. Mm-hmm. So I'm very happy that you are trying out to put your message out there to women. Yeah. The first thing is you need to be, you need to put on a, a straight face like sorry you need to be um clear in what you want to do or i don't know what's the word 
you need to you need to put up a thick face you because you you're going to face a lot of objections mm. right um, I face a lot of objections because my path and my route is I would say very different from uh, the convention from uh, my society my world mm. my people right and uh, you know back then before Instagram was famous full of like videos and workouts and fitness influencers um, bodybuilding is and and training pers- uh, weight training it's a it's a tap it's almost like a taboo right? mm-hmm. you know like they People don't talk about yeah, it they also. don't talk about it and it's uh, it's unconventional mm. so um, but that was my passion all along I knew it and uh, I went after it you need to put out a straight face you're gonna face a lot of objections and um, accept the no you need to you need to go <laughs> through it because um, if you if you don't Mm. stick to what you decide mm. then you're going to follow somebody else's dream you're going to follow somebody else's uh, philosophy or, or, or their viewpoint of life you're going to be working for somebody's dream so would you rather build your own dream or would you rather uh, help someone else to accomplish or you know materialize a dream so you make the decision yeah. yes i agree with that yeah. because that's what i told my team members yeah. as well like for you now, I know you are working a 9 to 6, but you are actually working for yourself. Yeah. Always remember that you are bringing the value of yourself. Yeah. You are not working for someone's dream. Yeah. Yeah. And the and, uh, last thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end here is, mm. uh, with this podcast is that uh, before I go, uh, I'm talking, I've talked to the women mm. in, in the market. I've talked to like, the marketing part and mm. those who want to start a business. And now I want to reserve this last message to all the personal trainers out there in Malaysia. Um, whether you are working in a commercial gym, you're working freelance, or you're in any um, boutique gym or whatever, how you are serving your market, um, the first thing you want to know is that just because the market don't look up to you as a personal trainer or health professional, it doesn't mean that you are nobody. It doesn't mean that you uh, your skill is, is not in demand or you're not an expert. So what you want to do is you want to do whatever it takes you want to invest in yourself and you want to get really good at your skill you want to be an expert in your field pick a niche and get r- very well in what you do helping them to solve the problem and uh, that's how you stand out from the market when you when you really know yourself and you help solve big problem um, people will come to you you'll never run out of clients so PT, you are not just a PT. You have your own values. Yeah. yeah. Know your values because everybody is somebody. Yeah. yeah. So with that, I would like to end this podcast. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in to be on the podcast with me. So I will, we will see you next round. Thank you so much.